colleagues, welcome to this new PCR online program, a comparison between cardiac surgeon perspective and interventional cardiologist perspective, but articles that have been recently published and are of particular relevance for cardiovascular community. And I have the privilege to interview two experts in valvular disease. Let me introduce you Francesco Maisano, a cardiac surgeon in Milan, and uh, uh, Fabian Paz, interventional cardiologist uh, in Bern. Welcome to both of you, and thank you for joining me this initiative. Today, we are going to discuss one of your results uh, about uh, uh, transcatheter edge to edge uh, repair of, uh, for treatment of tricuspid regurgitation. This article has been published in JAC in 2021 uh, by the three Luminate uh, investigators. And let's start with the questions now. In most cases, torrential TR remains at least severe after triclip procedure. Looking at the results, would you still perform such procedure on torrential tricuspid regurgitation and why? So Paola, you are absolutely right to say that in uh, a lot of patients in the triluminate study, uh, which include 85 patients, uh, tricuspid regurgitation remains severe at one year. But what we have to look at is a, a number of patients uh, included with more than severe tricuspid regurgitation. So we have 37% of the patient with torrential tricuspid regurgitation and 26 patients with massive, meaning that 63% of the patient have more than severe tricuspid regurgitation when entering the study. So that's still quite a reduction in that patient with 87% uh, of the patient have, having more than one grade reduction at one year and 71% of the patient with uh, moderate or less. So still in that patient with very advanced uh, tricuspid regurgitation, the procedure was able to reduce uh, the, the severity of the regurgitation uh, significantly. And if you look also uh, at effective regurgitant orifice and vena contracta, these results are also consistent uh, with the grade uh, reduction. So I will still perform this procedure in torrential patient because also once this procedure is safe and second, uh, we have a symptomatic improvement in that patient uh, that is translated by a reduction, uh, uh, by an improvement of the quality of life and also by an improvement of the six minute walking distance uh, in uh, the majority of the patient at one year. After seeing the results, uh, uh, I have some doubts, obviously. We have been very liberal in the past. I think uh, we should be more cautious and understand that this patient may be beyond limits of uh, feasibility. So it's good to have this uh, data to support our decisions and uh, I'm not saying that I'm not going to treat these patients, but I will be very cautious in uh, uh, presenting the opportunities to the patients once they come to uh, discussion of, of, uh, of the therapeutic plan. In which patients uh, do you consider triclip futile? What do you take into account for your evaluation? So that's a very difficult question, actually, Paula, because we don't know exactly in which patient we will not have any effect of transcatheter tricuspid treatment uh, yet. But we have some situation, and I would say there are two different criteria that we need to look at. Some of them are anatomical criteria, and uh, we need to look at the right ventricular function. We need to look, but also at the renal function of this patient, uh, at the primary artery uh, pressure, but also at many clinical factors, uh, including mobility of the patient, cognitive function, uh, the independency of the patient, and also the presence of severe uh, comorbidities. Comodidity, and that's clear in patients where you don't expect a symptomatic benefit, uh, the patient, uh, the procedure would be uh, futile. Futility is an important question, and we have been doing a number of futile interventions in the past. Uh, I don't know the answer, to be honest. Uh, we know more than before, but we don't know everything. We know that uh, uh, if the uh, pulmonary hypertension is fixed and it's too high, and if the right ventricular function is uh, uh, too disturbed, then probably we are beyond uh, the limits of, uh, of uh, fertility. Uh, what we learned in the last uh, few years is that uh, some of these patients uh, can benefit from uh, uh, a 
prehabilitation uh, process where you optimize uh, the conditions with high dose inotropes and diuretics and those who are not responding to this uh, pre-procedural uh, therapy, they may be uh, beyond the limits of operability. Uh, also, the presence of, uh, of a torrential TR that does not uh, regress after the initial therapy could be a sign of, of uh, no return. On the other hand, we are uh, discussing this topic in our uh, focus group, in PCR focus group, and I think uh, out of the expertise and experience from different centers, we will probably crack the code in the future. Uh, but for the time being, uh, I would be very skeptical to be absolutely convinced that one procedure is futile unless uh, I'm in, in front of a patient who has a lot of problems. There are few data about uh, postoperative medical therapy because only diuretics uh, have been mentioned. Do you have a therapeutic protocol after trichoid procedure? So we don't have a dedicated protocol yet uh, regarding post-procedural management of this, of this patient, but that's uh, probably something uh, we will do in the future. And I think one of the main message in that situation, and that's also what we try to convey to the referring physician is that you don't stop diuretic therapy after uh, this kind of procedure. Maybe the patient is feeling better. Maybe you have an improvement in the volume status of the patient, but you should probably, and that's particularly true for replacement, not only for edge to edge repair, you should probably continue with diuretic treatment and not reduce automatically the dose of the diuretic treatment in order to have a benefit from the annuloplasty effects of, of edge to edge repair as well, and to have a continuous treatment uh, with the aim to reduce the right ventricular dimensions. I like this question a lot. Uh, the answer is no, we don't have a, a standardized approach to post procedural treatment. This is one of the uh, big discussions at the moment. I think uh, we should go beyond. Uh, uh, treating the valve in, in, in the cat lab or in the hybrid room. We should take care of these patients in a more uh, structured way afterwards. And we need to find the, the exact recipe of uh, uh, device and drug interaction for these patients. Uh, again, this is one of the big topics we are discussing within the PCR focus group. Uh, still a piece of, a, this is an element which was also missing in the trial and uh, there is need for more uh, science around this topic. Trifle procedure proved to be safe and effective. Do you think that we are ready to perform it in every hospital? That's an excellent question. I don't think that we are ready now for prime time in every hospital. It's of course true that the procedure and the, the data from the 12 minute study show it that the procedure is safe and that's bailout by a cardiac surgeon is extremely is extremely rare in that kind of uh, in that kind of procedure. But the procedure is still complex, and I would not say only from the interventional point of view, but mainly from the imaging. And that's where you need to have appropriate training. That's where you need to have specialized uh, imaging uh, using uh, three-dimensional imaging as well, maybe using eyes in some situation uh, as well. And the pre-procedural workup is also extremely uh, important. And I think that's more the reason why this kind of procedure needs to be done at very uh, specialized uh, center with surgery uh, as well. Uh, not for bailout, as I mentioned, but rather for the selection of the patient uh, and the experience of the surgeon in the, in the reconstruction of the valve. So the data from a three luminate study, uh, they are coming from uh, high volume centers and even the high volume centers are still in their learning phase. And being a center who has been working on this, on this procedure since a few years, I am still learning. And I think uh, to open uh, these uh, activities in many centers uh, probably would be a mistake at this moment because we need to try to concentrate experience and expertise in few centers who are really dedicated, where you have a multidisciplinary team ready to take care of complex patients until we understand really the exact indications, the best way to treat patients, the best way to select these patients, and the best way to treat them afterwards 
I really would like to see this uh, uh, in, in those centers who really dedicate their uh, interest uh, uh, from a clinic, uh, clinical standpoint and from a scientific standpoint to this topic. And uh, probably this will be the, the way to go. But obviously, these procedures one day will be available in many hospitals. According to the results achieved, do you think there is still need for surgery on tricuspid valve? That's a bit more a provocative question. I think there is still, of course, a need for surgery of the tricuspid valve. But what we don't know, actually, is whether the, the surgery is the right therapy for the tricuspid valve, because we don't have convincing evidence of this. We don't have yet a comparison uh, with medical treatment in the patient with, uh, with uh, tricuspid regurgitation. And we have some information that there may be after uh, reconstruction, surgical reconstruction of the tricuspid valve, still a quite high rate of uh, recurrence. Some, uh, some uh, reports um, uh, show one third uh, in one sort of the patient, uh, moderate uh, recurrent uh, TR after three or five years. Uh, but what I have to say also is that surgery is a very safe uh, therapy in very experienced center. There is also data showing this. Um, and, and that this uh, procedure can also be performed uh, very safely and effectively, but again, in center with uh, the required experience. So we will need more data to determine which is actually the best uh, way to approach patient with severe tricuspid regurgitation. Aye, 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 this is a bad question for a surgeon, and, and you are a surgeon, so what should I say? Obviously, yes, there is room for surgery. Uh, there will always be room for surgery for specific patients. On the other hand, uh, uh, what we can do with catheters today is amazing. We can really treat a lot of uh, patients uh, which were one day untreatable, and in the future, uh, I can foresee that these therapies will also be offered to intermediate risk patients who want to be treated early, as early as possible. That does not mean that we don't need any more surgery. Uh, fortunately for surgeons and unfortunately for patients, because nobody wants to be uh, cracked open, like uh, we say. Uh, but absolutely, we need to maintain the skills of, of good surgeons like you, Paola. Uh, we need to be there. Uh, we need to uh, help the community to join a larger effort because surgery remains an important uh, tool in our, uh, in our box. And uh, we need to be absolutely ready to offer the best uh, treatment to our patients without any technical bias, any clinical bias. In conclusion, our experts agree that the tracking procedure uh, offers a therapeutic opportunity for patients otherwise deemed uh, inoperable. However, a longer follow-up is needed. Once again, thank you Fabian and thank you Francesco for your time and for sharing your expertise with us. Thank you very much Paola for having me. Goodbye to everybody. Goodbye Paola. Goodbye Fabian, see you soon. Thank you all for watching this video so far and see you in the next interview.